I have a question. What is the best starting class if you only use the starting gear and didn't level anything up? So to do this, I killed the very first enemy I saw. It's the big ass horseman carrying a three ton shield and a halberd the size of my dildo. I killed that tree sentinel with every single class. Now listen, listen, J just, just you and me. If you find any of this entertaining or interesting, please leave a like and subscribe. It helps out tremendously and I'll be forever in your debt. Like, like, please, like, come on. Like I'm living off empty cans of Pringles. There's no Pringles in here. And I, and I got some dried up grapes that haven't even turned to raisins. They have mold on them. So, uh, p please, please send help. We got the Vagbond. This is your great all-rounder. If you played other Souls games, it, like Dark Souls 1, it's pretty much the knight. You got heavy armor, you got a sword, you got a halberd, and you got a beefy as heck shield. You can pretty much take any kind of beating and be able to dish it out as well. The problem is, you're not all too quick. If you're using all the starting gear, you can't really roll. You do a fat roll. So you rely very heavily on guarding with that shield and managing your stamina. And so that's something that I had to learn because my playstyle is more like get in and get out. This class, if you get in, you are in there for the long haul. And so pretty much where I ended up leaving this guy was around the mid tier compared to the other ones. Like he's good all around, but if you look at what's coming in the future, he definitely doesn't reach those top tiers. It's the dual curve sword guy who's fashionably dressed. So the warrior is really good with stacking up damage. Like if if you leave the warrior alone, they can just swing away and do all their stuff. They'll they'll rack up that damage. The good thing is, while you're you're chucking in the hits, doing all that, you can pretty much dodge out of any attack that you do. But there's a caveat. Per swing, you do almost no damage. You have to go in there and do a bunch of swings to get that that damage number up pretty high. So you have to balance out like, am I gonna go in for a ton of damage here? Am I gonna like only do a little bit, dodge out of the way, do a little bit, dodge out of the way, do a little bit? So it's a lot of that dance where you see an attack coming, you have to react to it, get a little punches in, react, get a little punches in. So it, it shifts the health bar down slowly over time, unlike a few of them which chunk it down. So because of that, I would put them a little higher than Vagabond because Vagabond's highly defensive, not too much on the damage output. Warrior, very high damage output, but you have to be left alone to actually deal that. The hero gets a large F off ax. And for how I play this, this is one of one of the fun, funnest things you can have, because basically if you ever land a fully charged heavy attack, like it's beefy and it, and the damage just chunks it down. So the problem this leads into is at least for me while, while doing this kind of a run, it led to me taking far riskier attacks than I normally would, because I just wanted to get that beefy hit in all the time. So towards the end of it, I settled for doing jumping heavies, and then once the posture was broken on the tree sentinel, <clears throat> I would go for the charged heavy, get it, and then repeat. So it was a lot of jumping, like, jump three times, do a charged heavy, jump three times, do a charged heavy, and so on. Sometimes there was openings where I could do a charged heavy, and definitely took it but overall it's 
it's very high risk, high reward. Like you, you have to time it and know your boss down. So because of that, I would put it higher than warrior because it has massive single hit damage. But in order to get some of that, you have to put yourself in into harm's way quite a bit. So, um, my favorite class in the entire Dark Souls series is the Thief. The Thief equivalent in Elden Ring is called the Bandit. Don't even touch this thing. Don't even play this thing. Don't even think about it. If you're only going to use the starting gear. The knife you start with is so terrible, like, it does nearly no damage compared to anything else. On top of that, because of some nerfs that have come along with the game, the bleed that's on the knife also almost does next to nothing. So you still get the huge chunk that the bleed happens, but you have to put in so much effort to get the bleed to go off that it's like, what am I even putting this effort in for? So at the start, I was going for sort of like a run it, a hit and run style. So I would go in, do a like running heavy, hit it, back off, and then repeat, and then... I didn't see any bleeds and because of how the nerfs and stuff works the like let's say boss's invisible bleed bar would actually go down faster than I could apply it so then towards the end I pretty had to adopt an extremely aggressive playstyle where no matter what I had to be swinging my weapon the good thing is you can dodge out of almost every attack with the dagger because it's so quick the bad thing is you have to keep up the pressure so much, you cannot leave the Tree Sentinel's side. And I'm I'm gonna go with, this is pretty much what it's like for every boss. You cannot let up, and if you do, you're just gonna miss out on the bleed, which is pretty much what's gonna carry you the whole time. So, the feeling of getting the kill, amazing, phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. The feeling of getting sh my shit pushed in every couple of minutes... Terrible to the point of I wouldn't even suggest touching the bandit at all. Next, it's the astrologer. So this is your witch slash wizard class type of thing. Gotta be honest, this is not my kind of class. This is not my kind of playstyle. This isn't what I really like in the Souls games. Um, it's a really good range class. Like it's a mage, so you're casting spells most of the time. Um, lets you take down the enemies from afar before they even get close to you but the tree i found out the tree sentinel has a has a little thing up his sleeve um so once i got beaten up by that quite a bit i, I found a counter to it which is you have to wait for the tree sentinel to be in a, either an attack animation or recovery animation which stops him from using his shield but even when I was waiting for these times, if I got off by even a tiny bit, he'd be able to pull up the shield and try and, like, reflect my spells back at me and pretty much kill me. <laughs> so, the rough playstyle of how this went, I would react to his attack, do one or two spells, and then wait for his next attack and repeat. So it didn't really feel too satisfying. It's effective, but it's just... Overall, it's not really a fun, satisfying way to play. Now, later in the game, if you don't worry about just only using your starting equipment and so on, it gets insane. Like, you can do a Kamehameha, you can do so much ridiculous stuff with magic, but just for this sake, we were only using the starting equipment, and sadly for the astro Astrologer, eh... It just, it just doesn't have it. Like, it, it's good range, you can kill any boss backing up slowly and so on, but the playstyle, it's just not too fun compared to a bunch of others. This next class really confused me on how to actually play well. It's the Prisoner. And if, if you've played it or touched it at all, you, you know why. It has a, it's a mix between a melee class and a mage. So you get given a spell, it's like Glintstone Blade or something. You cast the spell, it creates a blue orb, and then the orb sits there for a little bit, it forms into a blade, and then it finally shoots off at the enemy. This causes a ton of issues when fighting bosses like the Tree Sentinel, because... 
he, he's got his shield. So he'll often just put his shield up and then deflect your spells right back at you and then beat you up. <laughs> so it, it creates this weird dynamic where you have to cast a spell but at an awkward time in order to account for the delay. So it has a ton, a ton of thinking to it. So if you like planning stuff out and like setting a trap, because you can you can put the spells down sort of like a trap for it, it'll run into you, you place like three, and then you run to the other side. So even if he tries blocking or whatever, his shield's gonna be pointed at you and you can still hit like his back or his horse or whatnot. So it's a it's very weird. And then on top of the spells you get an S-Stock. The S-Stock does pretty little damage. It's it's low, pretty low. It comes with a really good weapon art where you you pierce through and you stab, um, but even that damage it's still lower than a bunch of other ones. So, the it's just not a good class when you're only using the starting gear. It's a good start to go into other things, but just on its own it's it's lacking. Now for the meme class, it's the level one, the wretch. So the wretch starts off far worse than pretty much everyone else. They get 10 in every stat, so they're almost they're among the lowest health classes. They might even be the lowest one. They get no clothes, no armor, none of that, so they have ne no defense whatsoever, and then they get a stick. Okay, it's a slightly big stick, it's a club, but still a stick. So how do they stand up against a few of the others? Well, surprisingly well. Um... Their playstyle, so the club is very close to the axe, so the wretch is very close to the hero, where what you do is a bunch of jump heavy attacks, and then eventually get a chart, you'll break its posture, and then you do a charge attack. So it goes pretty much hand in hand with the hero, but it's a, um, since you don't have the armor or anything to really take the hits or anything, um, you'll end up dying to a lot of stuff that the hero would just sort of shrug off, thanks to the armor and so on. <clears throat> so overall, it's it's just a worse hero. Uh, if you're planning to do stuff in the future, it's pretty good, but just based off what it starts with, uh, if you like that, just, just go with hero, honestly. I saved three of these classes to talk about them all at the same time because these are the best classes when it comes to fighting early game bosses or in my case fighting the tree sentinel when they only had their starting gear going into this i thought it was going to be samurai because pretty much everyone says samurai is the most overpowered samurai is this samurai is that blah 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 two various nerfs buffs throughout the whole game it caused the samurai to drop down a few pegs to actually be mortal compared to a few of them now, with the samurai, they get a amazing weapon art. So what you do, you sheath your sword and then you do a heavy attack and it causes massive damage. On top of this, the sword also applies bleed. So if you put two of them both together, you'll be hitting very hard with single hits and then eventually the bleed will go off. And so those two stuck together makes the samurai one of the top, top starting classes. I didn't really use this too much for myself because I wasn't going to go around and farm items, but the samurai also gets a bow, so you can do range combat and so on as well. But for sake of this, I left it out because I was only using what I was given at the start, which was limited arrows, so it's like, eh, I'll just use the weapon art, really. The samurai, really good single hit damage, but... They leave themselves a little open when they go for that. When they're, <clears throat> when you go into the weapon art, you have to sheath the sword, and then you take it out, and you do your attack, and then you can dodge. So that little amount of time can get you caught a few times. A class that doesn't really have that is the Prophet. The thing with the Prophet is, they get a spear, they get some Healy spell. Both of those are just window dressing, honestly. The main thing is their O Flame spell. This thing will shred anything. When it comes to how fast you can use it, the initial cast takes some time. Every cast after that keeps going. So you'll cast, it'll take like, let's say half a second. Then the next, the follow-up one will take a quarter. And so 
the amount of damage you can stack up just in one go spamming this thing is insane. But, as Uncle Ben said, great power comes great responsibility. And this killed me a lot. So I would often go in for risky plays just because I like seeing the numbers stack up higher and higher and higher. And hey, it's greedy, but it was fun. So come on. <laughs> I slept on this, this class since the beginning of the game. I didn't really see what the point of it was. Like, it's sort of an edgier character. Take, take a Grim Reaper, take away the Scythe, and then give him a Broadsword. Eh... It seems kind of plain, but let me tell you, when you play this, this, this class hits like a truck. And not just any truck, like this truck, it's a Ford F-150, or whatever the heck you want to call it, a cyber truck. <laughs> it's nuts, the amount of damage you can output with this. The sword swings itself, they're pretty good, but the, the main creme de la creme, is the weapon art heavy. So you do a square off where you hold the sword and you point forwards. The <clears throat> light attack will do a sweep, good for breaking shields and so on. The heavy attack will do a piercing thrust. And that's really good. Based off fighting the tree sentinel with only the starting classes and their starting equipment, I can safely say that for me, the best starting class is the Confessor. Now, here's how long it took to get a kill with each class. Granted, some of the times are a little off based on when I quit the game and so on and so forth. The earlier classes, I was taking some time to learn how to fight the boss, so definitely by the end, I figured out I, I had the boss down. Now, at the top, we got my Confessor. But also up there, unsurprisingly, the Samurai. These two, I would say, are neck and neck for best starting class. If you want to take only your base equipment and not really change anything up, these two are your go-tos. An honorable mention would be the Prophet. Now, <laughs> the reason it's times where it is not really up by the other two is purely because of me and being greedy. It's a big damage number. I really enjoyed it. So, sadly, the, the Prophet gets pushed down into sort of a mid-tier, where Hero and Warrior join alongside it. Low-tier is made up of the sort of more passive classes that weren't really able to dish out as much damage as the others, so that's like your Vagabond, your Astrologer, your Wretch, and your Prisoner. So that's all nine starting classes. You got your Confessor Samurai at the top, you got your Prophet, Hero, and Warrior in the middle, and then at the bottom, you got your Vagabond, Astrologer, Wretch, and Prisoner. Can't really think of any other classes, and, uh... Whew! Don't play Bandit. <laughs>